out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour Be viewing out the outpouring your for your refreshing and infilling. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit on me. Greetings in the precious name of Jesus. I greet you today in no other name but the wonderful and precious name of Jesus. I welcome you today to the outpouring and today I'm going to begin this session with a question and the question is why do we do what we do is it based on just tradition do we have a reason or we just accustomed so we just continue and we do things so I want to repeat the question why do we do what we do but before I get into today's program, I take it that you all had a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Lots of nice things to eat for those of you who got presents. I pray that uh, you, know, you got your heart's desires and your gifts and that it was a real beautiful time of sharing and family and all that. We still continue in the Christmas season over even though Christmas Day has gone, but we have New Year's coming and it's really 12 days of Christmas. So before I get into the topic, I would open a word of prayer. Father, I give you thanks today. Thanks for another opportunity, God, to come into the homes, uh, into the hearts, into the places and into the spaces, God, of your beloved people father i pray that as i minister today that the word will come forth with clarity god that it will be a blessing and that we all will examine our hearts and examine our lives to really find out why we do what we do and that we will have more purposeful lives and that we will remain on point in the things that you will have us to do. So Father, once again, bless those who are viewing and let your word accomplish the thing for which it is sent in the most precious name of Jesus. Amen. So the question, why do we do what we do? As Christians, as believers, we can come into a place of uh, traditions where we doing a whole lot of good things or we doing things in general and we're not too sure the motive or the reason behind what we do so we have lost the heart for that thing but yet we continue in a form and this could be a very dangerous place because the word of God says that sometimes we could have a form of godliness, but we deny the power of God. We also saw in when Jesus walked the earth that he had a lot, a lot of issues with the scribes and the Pharisees. They, those were the religious people of that day. And they would go through a whole host of rituals and things, but yet their hearts were really far from God. So much so that they are the ones that killed Jesus. They, they were the ones that killed Jesus. So every ever so often, we, we, need to, we need to examine, why am I doing what I am doing? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? And in so doing, we will stay on point because we could really get caught up on a, on a roller coaster of, of activities that there is no reward, there is no substance, there is no heart in it. And uh, I want to just use uh, a few examples of exactly what I'm speaking about. And one of the examples I want to use is the tide. So we know in the very beginning, um, when the tide was introduced, but even let's go before the tide was introduced, you had Abraham who gave 
one tenth uh, to Melchizedek, the king of Salem, because he he you know he received all these blessings, and he found that it was important to give back a tenth. So we have that part of it with Abraham. Then also we have uh, with Moses. Uh, when God gave Moses the Ten Commandments and we had the Levites and the different priests and all that and even in the book of Leviticus and Numbers those books spoke about giving you know giving like of your first increase giving your first fruit and giving one tenth so this was handed down from way back and uh, just like those uh, patriarchs of that day we would have received this information through reading the word and through growing up in church and different cultures where they would pass the basket and all that. And we, we do it and we do it because we do it. However, one of the main reasons why we should obey God, and I'm being very purposeful when I say obey God, not just go through our, our a tradition or a ritual but obey God it is because of our love for God the Word of God says that if you love me you will obey me so all of us we all say well we love God we love God we love God but his word said if you love me one of the ways that I will know that you love me is by walking in obedience to me so we have a group of people, they may give tithes and offerings when, you know, things are going nice, they work in, they have the excess. So it's no big deal, you give it and you go through that ceremony. But then things go a little different, like you're no longer employed or you're not getting as much funds as you used to get or whatever situation happens because things do turn in this life nothing remains constant it's a it one constant is change because change is constantly happening so you are now in a situation where the money is not as great as before so one of the first things that you do is uh, you stop giving stop paying your fights because downturn covid this that that and i want us to examine this area and i want us to look closely at it the word of God says, give up and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. The, the entire Bible at varying places throughout the whole Bible, that principle of giving has been mentioned. Actually, at the beginning, the word of God says that seed time and half, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. So you sow and you reap. Now, if sowing is just when things are nice, then something is wrong with that. It must be a principle that is carried right through. If even you're no longer working, if even the government giving you a handout, if even somebody bless you with a hundred dollars, <throat> the important thing is for you to take out that portion, that one tenth. And uh, in so doing, what you are actually doing is one, thanking God that you receive that portion of money, whether it's a gift, whether it's from a friend, whether it's from the government, whether it's the church. You're thanking God. You're honoring God. You're obeying God. And you are asking Him to bless the rest. And also you are positioning yourself for more. Because as you give that one tenth, the 90% is blessed and the hand of the devourer is withdrawn. And as you give that one tenth, you are also now positioning yourself to receive more because the earth operates on giving and receiving. Now, there are even Christians who practice that and they are blessed by it, but they are also 
businessmen and, and people who don't even have an awareness of God, but they understand the principle of giving and receiving. So why we do what we do is important that we examine and when we know exactly why we are doing something, nothing and no one will be able to shake us off from that position. And when I say nothing, I mean not even a change in situation, not even a change in, in our income. Nothing should change us from our position of walking in obedience to God. And I, if I may dare say that when things are challenged, when things are, you know, really in a difficult place financially and you really have a great need, ideally what you should be doing is just look all around you. Just find something to give so that you can open the windows of heaven over your life. This is critical, especially in these times that we're living and uh, you're not doing the pastor a favor. God, uh, in his word, he said, he said if he were hungry, he wouldn't even ask because he owned the cattle on a thousand hills. So when we give, it's positioning ourselves to receive the blessings from God. Is positioning ourselves that God will protect the rest of our income. We are also positioning ourselves for when hard times come that we will not be left in a crisis. The Word of God says, cast your bread upon the waters and after many days it will come back to you. So while things are good and while you're sowing, there's that principle that it will come back, all right? Now, I know this, what I'm sharing may be a little difficult pill for some to swallow because, you know, some people will say, well, I ain't getting the amount of money I get in, so I can't pay no tithes, no? As if, well, this paying tithes was a, a, a duty and a chore and a, you know, like a heavy burden. But serving God and walking in obedience to God and loving God and doing the right thing is not a burden. He said, if you love me, you will obey me. If the word of God says this about giving these principles, then we love God. Our response is to walk in obedience. And when we do that, what we're really showing God is that we trust him. We trust him to be our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And he is really our provider. He is no man's debtor, right? Once you give, once you sow, you are going to reap. Whatever you have over this season, whatever little, whatever plenty, work the principles of the word of God and it is going to work for you. Don't get religious with it. Don't get ritualistic and traditional, but just work the principles of the word of God. As we continue in why we do what we do, a next area I want to bring is the area of prayer and seeking and spending time with God. Um, and in this area, we can also, we could get a little religious. Um, we are accustomed going to church and it's prayer time and we make this long prayer. And the Bible talks about that. It talks about some people you know, like to stand on the street corners to be seen of men with the long garments and making long prayers and all of that. So we may not necessarily have the long gongs and stand by the street corner, but we could find ourselves doing that same thing where we have all the fancy words and we stand up there and we give it out. So the question is, why am I doing what am I doing? Is it to be seen of men? 
Is it to appear to be very holy? Is it to show that, well, I could pray? No, it is because uh, our Heavenly Father has given us a beautiful and wonderful privilege called prayer, where we can have his supernatural intervention in our natural situations. And he said that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Something that happens, uh, and uh, it can happen to anyone, uh, and it can happen to all of us. And that is we can use our prayer as a curse. Yes, I said that we can use our prayer as a curse. In praying about a situation like somebody may have wronged you, and in praying concerning that person or concerning that conflict or concerning that situation, if we do not guard our hearts, we could be using prayer as a way of sending curses, hate messages, and unforgiveness out instead of following the word of God. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, he spoke about love and he said, I will show you, you know, a way. And he said, it, he, he ended the discourse by saying, love is the most excellent way. Prophecies will pass away, faith and all of that, but love is a constant. And the beginning of that discourse, it speaks about all the things that love is. So in our prayer, <clears throat> it is important that we apply the principles of the word of God, like forgiveness, love, long suffering, gentleness, kindness, all the fruits of the spirit, even in our prayer as we address areas of conflict, areas when we are offended, and areas when we are wrong or we have been wronged the word of god has principles for living and we cannot take one principle in a in a religious ritualistic manner and throw off all the others to keep that one. It's like you're, you're, you're using an elephant to kill an ant. It's, 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 it's off-sided. It's not balanced. The Word of God has a word for every situation. And in our prayer life, our prayer must, as we obey God in praying concerning all different situations, the good, the bad, and the ugly, as we pray, we still need to pray in accordance with the other principles. We pray in accordance with the principle of forgiveness. We pray in accordance with the principles of love. We pray in accordance with the principles of long suffering. So we can't obey one and disobey the others. We must be in a balance of the word. So it comes back to why am I doing what am I do what I do? It's a place where we need to examine our hearts on a daily basis before God, examine our motives, examine our patterns because we could fall into different patterns and different ways of operating. And we need to examine this, that we are on point and that we are staying on track. Now, there's another area that I would touch briefly on, and uh, this area, and it it may it more pertain to young persons, but even more, more mature ones also. And this is the area of the love of God, and we we in a Christian society. I'm going to say Christian society. I mean it in two ways: Christian, and then general everybody. You know, they refer to themselves as a Christian. However, you know, we love God and we can talk the talk. We can talk about 
God and when he asks how are you I am blessed and God this and God that and God the other and, and, and that's great you know that we can talk about God we can have a God awareness but it comes uh, sometimes to a place of uh, uh, over familiarity so God 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 love God but yet there is no fear of God and yet there is not the obedience of God so we have all these people talking about God singing about God leading worship doing all these things all these things and behind closed doors and this is not to condemn anyone this is that we will all examine our lives see where we fall short repent and walk in obedience to God so behind the scenes you have a whole host of things going on you have um, people living together they shack up the word of God talks about marriage they love God they talk about God they send messages on God they forward this about God this and this pray that pray that pray. but yet the word of God that talks about marriage and all that they throw that out the window the areas of uh, adultery fornication gossiping slander all these things uh, are it becomes like a way of life and it becomes a way of life so much to the point uh, where we actually say God will understand <laughs> we actually say that God will understand yes in ignorance uh, God winks but we have a responsibility that if we are talking God, if we are professing to love God, if we are walking and going to church, then we do have a responsibility to fear God and also to live holy. That is our responsibility. Now, I am not going to close our uh, eye as if I don't understand that sometimes uh, when somebody would have just given their life to the Lord and they have certain issues or certain pet sins that they were accustomed to it 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 works in a process to begin to leave off one lifestyle and go into another so it becomes a struggle you repent you confess and then next two weeks you fall back into the same thing but there is a, a, a fear of God and a repentance that you say God I, you know I fell and I didn't mean to but please forgive me and you get up and you struggle and you press and you go again that is different because the heart place of that person is to really do the right thing and to please God the apostle paul said it he said the thing that i want to do i do not do and the thing that i ought not to do that i do so there is a phase where as we being processed and we climbing the ladder and we coming into a deeper relationship with god we have that major major struggle and probably until we die we we would not have that you know if it's not one thing it will be a next thing that we may be struggling with from time to time but the deliberate living in sin the deliberate choice of living in a particular way that is contrary to the word of god and that deliberate way of life and yet saying god god and then on top of it saying god will understand that cannot continue the beautiful thing about the psalmist David is that he said to the Lord, he said, search me, O God, and know my heart. The heart is what determines why we do what we do. When we are able to sit with ourselves and say, Lord, search me. If there is any wicked way in me, if there is any sin in me, if there is anything in me that doesn't please you, forgive me and cleanse me and help me to do the right thing 
as I get ready to close today's program, I would just like to read a verse from Luke chapter 10, it's verse 42. And uh, this verse uh, sort of pulls together something that happened with Jesus and Mary and Martha. Martha was busy, busy, busy doing all the preparation and Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet. And uh, Jesus, Martha went and complained to Jesus and Jesus' response was, uh, but the Lord, re I'll read it from verse 41. It says, but the Lord replied to her by saying, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. There is need of only one or a few things. Mary has chosen the good portion, that which is to her advantage and which shall not be taken away from her. So I encourage you in all that I shared about why we do what we do, if we spend time at the feet of Jesus, if we spend time in that secret place, in the word of God, communing, having fellowship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that will point us in the right direction when we spend that time, we will become aware of why we do what we do. And if we are doing things for wrong motives or for vain glory, we are positioning ourselves in the secret place for God to cleanse us, to heal us, and to give us the right motives and daring bring about our growth. Viewers, I am out of time my prayer is that this ministry today would have been a blessing to you it's not to bring condemnation but is to bring about change and that cleansing that is required that God expects from us so I close now with the question why do we do what we do? This has been the outpouring for your upliftment. God bless you. Shalom. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour Reviewing out the outpouring your for your refreshing and infilling. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit, pour